Welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. And this week, Sheila Bissell has brought us some more Memphis beers. Oh, awesome. It seems like we were just doing Memphis beers not too long ago. Yeah. And uh, she said this one, these are, not these are better, but yeah. if when she goes to Memphis and she's there on a contract right now, this mm-hmm. is the beer that she asked for. Okay. So, in particular, the uh, the Golden. The Golden. Uh, yes. That's the one that I had when I was in Memphis of this brewery. So Interesting. We have that in common. So it's Ghost River Brewing in Memphis, Tennessee. And she brought us four different ones. So there's the Ghost River. There's a mixed four-pack. Okay. Uh, Ghost River Gold, which is their golden ale. The Midnight Magic German-style black ale. Yeah, I'm interested in that one. Sounds scary. Um, Riverbank Red, Irish ale. Style red ale. That's good timing. Mm-hmm. Coming yeah. up on it. It's Here we go. And then the last one is called 1887 Indian India Pale Ale. I wonder if that's when the city was founded or mm-hmm. something like that. It's got to be something related to the Memphis. Date. Yeah, I I would guess that that's when the city when Memphis was founded. So all right, so. Which one? I, I assume we're just going to open all of these and try. Them. I mean, we might as well. Okay, that sounds good. So I would say we want to go the black one last. So the black one would warm up a little bit, maybe? A little bit, or it's just going to... I think the color of it will just dilute the rest of what we're trying to do. So mm. I would I would start golden, and then maybe the IPA, and then the red. Okay. I think, and then the, the black lager last. So thanks to Sheila Bissell for the, uh, the duck video from... Uh, oh, she was the winner. She was the winner from a couple weeks back. Nice. Yeah. So she enjoyed a, uh, a barbecue dinner on me, sent me the receipt, and then sent me pictures. If you're on uh, Atlas and Friends, you saw pictures of her barbecue dinner. This was actually the beer that she was drinking when she ate her barbecue dinner. Nice. There at, was it called Rendezvous? Is that the Yeah, place? Rendezvous Ribs. Mm, it looked delicious. So Okay, mm. so the first one. You're going to like this one, I guarantee you. You think so? Yep. Ghost River Gold from Ghost River Brewing Company. So It's a very nice Golden. Yeah. Well, then they got the name right, they didn't they? Got the they? name right. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Holy mackerel! That's like a honey, mm-hmm. sweet. I can see why she drinks this. They have. I know at least for for sure one beer that actually says honey on the logo, and this one tastes very sweet. It's like a lager, I guess, the general style. Um, very drinkable. No hot punch or anything like that. That's like breakfast cereal sweet. Yeah. Almost. But without like being overly, you know right, what I mean? Right. Yeah. Not like sugar snaps or whatever. Right, right. But yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's good. I the like cereal that, that you'd buy for your kid when you thought, eh, okay, this is not quite Lucky Charms, but it's not quite Cheerios. I see. I thought you were going to go like with the bag cereal. No, in no. That direction. Like the generic ones or whatever? Yeah. No. Tootie mm. Fruities and... Mm. All that stuff. Nothing wrong with those. Not what I like. Mm-hmm. I saw something funny the other day. Was a picture of a dad, and he had a box that was like, we'll say it's Lucky Charms. Sure. And he was dumping the bag cereal <laughs> into the box of Lucky <laughs> Charms because the kids would all eat the box. Yep. But it's the same stuff. So ABV, what do you think on this? This one? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say 5.2. 5.25. <sighs> You are a beer savant. Uh, something like that. What is the... It doesn't say this on here. Mm-hmm. Um, wh- what do you think the uh, the IBUs are on this thing? Oh, on this thing? Nothing. <sighs> it's got to be nothing. I would say... I would actually go 35. All right, I'm going to go... I'm going to look it up here. So, hang on. That's... Uh... You're going to see my name on untapped with a four cap rating for this beer. So, you, oh, man. Once again... I'd encourage others. I want to, I want others to get on Untapped too yeah. because I'd like to see the other. Uh, you know what I had to do because of Untapped? I had to like unpush the notifications. Oh, because I was getting badge after badge after badge, and I was like, <laughs> nobody needs to know a how much I'm consuming, <laughs> and b what you know. Most people that if they're not into it, they don't care. They don't want to see that stuff. No. So I had to like mute the the badge push to Facebook, but I still like to look at them on my own. I, I still like to yes. So Ghost River, oh, not Ghost Rider. That's a different beer. It is. Ghost River Gold. Interesting. So, all right, as I'm looking this up, oh, you scored this lower than I thought you would. 
Um, what do you think the untapped rating is on this beer? Out For of average? 15,000 cool. ratings. Um, I would say 3.68. 3. 3.48. Hmm. Um, a little lower than I thought. Hmm. I actually, for this style, am going to go a little bit higher. I'd be like a 4.25 on Whoa. this. Whoa. Yeah. It's very good. I, I really like this one. Um, 11 IBUs. Ooh. So this... That's it, hardly any. This isn't even like like Coors Light bitter. No. No. Yeah. That's bitter in a bad way sometimes, those well, domestic beers. Yeah, but. true. I'm just trying to... Perspective. Yeah. Hmm. There's... N- yeah. I I, he- I hesitate to even say this is a gateway beer because the flavor is so good that it's it's better than that. You know what I mean? Yes. Like this is a beer with flavor that anybody could enjoy for sure. I could see why you would eat why Sheila ordered mm-hmm. this with ribs and stuff. Yeah, because you it could would complement that. It doesn't overpower the flavor yep. of the barbecue rub and mm-hmm. any of that sort of stuff. Yeah, it would. It would mm. actually. It would cut through that a little bit and. And give you some maybe relief from the heat, maybe some yeah, of the, the I could, uh, yeah, yeah, some bit. of that spice, yeah. Mm, man, that's good. Mm. That's just one of those drink like you could just drink the crud out of that so one. So many of them. This is a warm summer night. Yep. Kind of sitting around outside on you know type oh, of thing. Yeah, on the patio or whatever. Yep. The apartment deck, whatever, with wherever, your folding chair or whatever you got yep, going. Wherever there. you're sitting. Mm. Interesting. Like 4.25. I'm going to, that's a, man. So I had this beer. This is a good tie-in. This is why, why we drank this one first, I think. Sure. I had this at a place called the Blue City Cafe, which okay. is a restaurant um, pretty close to where the Peabody Hotel is. Okay. So it was really rainy that day in Memphis, and I didn't have a car. So I, I like, hustle, walk, ran to the closest place I could get to that had food open, and this was mm-hmm. where I went. Okay. Um, they had really good barbecue stuff. They also had... Southern food, I guess you'd call it, you know, like collard greens and mm. grits and, you know, mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting menu because um, they had things like, I wrote it down today, it was, it was I remember this still, um, I had ribs, they had steaks there, they have catfish, breadfish stuff, mm-hmm. uh, and tamales. They had like a subset of like Mexican food somehow, which was an influence of, I guess, of the people that were there at that time. Hmm. And uh, so it was known as like a barbecue place and like actually pretty decent Mexican food. Huh. At least when I was there a few years ago. How were the, did you try the tamales at all? I mean, that'd be interesting to. I didn't. I was strictly hmm. on a rib diet yeah, on that I, trip. Yep. As you should be in, in Memphis. That's, but. yes. So this place um, was opened, the restaurant I went to, it was opened in 1991 and it was called Doe's Eat Place back then. The, Do- the lady's nickname was Doe. Like D O E. Okay. Doe's Eat Place. Yep. And it was from Mississippi. The uh, owner, the husband, and the wife were from Mississippi, and then they opened this place here. Uh, It's just right on the corner of Beale Street, or if it's not on Beale Street exactly, it's like a block from Beale Street. Okay. Um, It was, they ran up there for two years, got bought out by some investors. This is when mid 90s, um, a lot of money was getting put into the Beale Street area to kind of like renovate it and make it um, more of a touristy sort of spot. Okay. Uh, however, this place, have you, you've seen the Blues Brothers, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you know the part with Aretha Franklin, like the diner? Uh, yes. That has the kind of feel of what this place has. Yes. So you walk in, and it's it's very similar to this wall, of all yep. these different things on the wall. But a lot of it's music related because they have a music venue in the back of the place. They have a stage set up. Okay. Um, and they have live music pretty much nightly from what I could tell. I looked on the calendar today. I had a cal- calendar of events on their website. And uh, they have lots of blues music mostly, hmm. but they have some other stuff too. So I wrote down some of the names that I've played here, okay. and I want to get maybe your reaction to some of the names. I love this. I tried to cut out some of the names that we talked about in the last Memphis one because mm-hmm. we could have been doing the same ones. Yep. Uh, Levon Helm. Do you know him? Mm. Drummer for the band? No. Do you know the band, Dolan? The band band. The band band, yeah. The band band. The band. One of my probably top five most influential music groups of all time for me. Hmm, okay. Super awesome. He has a he had a solo career after the band was over. Had a like a Grammy run, three solo albums before he died of throat cancer. Uh, and he performed live there a couple hmm. times with that solo, the solo band that he had. Okay. Hank Jr has played mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Um, Reverend Al Green has played there. Got to say BB just cuz he's the blues king. Of course. Uh, Richie Havens. You know about Richie Havens? I've heard the name. Dolan? 
Richie Havens was most popular. Uh, he's a folk singer, I guess you'd call him. And he was at the first Woodstock. Oh. And he's famous in the movie. He does a song called Freedom that's in the Woodstock uh, film. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a, a important song-ish, uh, only because the next band that was supposed to come up and play wasn't there yet. And they're like, we, you got to fill. You need to fill time. We yeah. need somebody to do something. So he came up with the song on the spot, on the stage, and it was basically just him saying freedom. But it's him, his, the guitar playing is what's amazing on him. And it's acoustic guitar. And the song goes for like 15, 16 minutes. Uh, and it's kind of a pivotal, really cool piece in the, in the movie. If you've hmm. ever seen the Woodstock uh, documentary, it's very cool. And it was all just off the cuff? Like yeah. It was just like, yeah. Sh- oh, wow. So he did that one. Okay. Uh, he was kind of known for wearing like long, it was like a long white robe is what he was seen in. His big song, he did a couple of Beatles covers. Okay. Here Comes the Sun, I think, mm. was like one of the big, big songs yeah. for him. Uh, then about, uh, this would have been uh, maybe early 2000s, Jack White. Know mm-hmm. him? Oh, yeah. You got to know him, right? White Stripes. He's from, he lives in, I think, in Nashville, but was out there playing around. Uh, Dog Star, Keanu Reeves fronted band. Oh, I knew I'd heard of that. Yeah. Dog Star. He played bass, Dolan. Look at that. There's you hope have, for you yet. You have something in common with Keanu Reeves. You both play bass. Maybe two things. Do you love dogs? <laughs> I'm gonna take that as a yes. I think so. Yeah, I am. I am uh, not John Wick. Oh, no. he's not. No. no. Nah. Well, I tried. You know how I feel about the John Wick movies, though. No. It's, well, how? Oh no. The You're... first one should never have been made, and then no one came what? out of John Wick one and said, "Man, I hope they make a John Wick 2. Nobody wow. said that. How are we? How are we friends I and don't... so <laughs> different? I love. I. You know what? I saw John Wick two. I never saw John Wick one. What? And I don't feel like I missed anything. Did you come out of John Wick 2 thinking, man, I hope they make John Wick 3? Yeah, because he had to, spoilers, he had to run at the end. Everybody had to hit on him. Uh, and he had to like get out of there and like the whole town was after him. Yeah, there's John Wick 3. And coming. John Wick 3, he's on a horse. What? Yes. Yeah. You're not I want to see that. You're not Rick Grimes. Like you're not. He doesn't have to be. He's John know. Wick. Yeah. He's got guns. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Maybe I think, uh, are we owed like a movie day? We are. Here, I think we yeah. should try to swing. John Wick 3 when it comes out. Gosh darn it. And then we'll do a little recap about it, too. Okay. I think we should do that. Maybe you and I should take over Atlas Now Streaming, and we could talk about John Wick. Oh, we should just do the whole series. We should. Yeah. We totally should. I think that's a good idea. All right. Here's another good idea. Go check out Yanni when you can. He Ooh. was there. I'm not ashamed to say that I, I appreciate Yanni's contributions to music. What are those? The, the pan flute. <laughs> pan flute. You know? I was going to say the mustache. Well, that too. And the seinfeld puffy shirt. Sure. Uh, I don't know that I've ever heard a Yanni song, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Uh, Kenny G, I can go with you. I've, yeah. I've heard some of his stuff, and Michael Bolton, of course. Mm-hmm. But Yanni, I, don't, I, I couldn't tell you one thing other than what he looks like. I'll take Yanni over both those guys. Really? Yep. Whoa. Now, Michael Bolton is... Yeah. Michael Bolton's different because he's in on the joke. True. Only because of Office Space. Only because of Maybe. Office Space. Well, That's... he's he's good friends with those the Lonely Island guys, mm-hmm. you know. So oh, he was true. on the yeah. in those videos, and then he was in a was he in a movie, I think. Michael Bolton was. Yeah, like a comedy. I can't remember if it was a Lonely Island movie. I think he was in that one that they made, Pop Star One or whatever it was called. Mm-hmm. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins. This is more our wheelhouse. Yeah, they played there. Really? Yeah. Billy played at the barbecue I'm, joint. I mean, I'm guessing this would have been. Gish, ninety oh. so ninety three ish before yeah. Siamese Dream came out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they probably needed a place to play. Yeah. So they play pretty much anywhere. So, yeah, yeah, just okay. like a bar band, you know, would do. Mm-hmm. Um, American Hi Fi. I don't know that band really in their music, but I know the name. I've seen it. Around. I've heard the name. Yeah, uh, Los Lonely Boys. They're a good blues band. They play around quite a bit. Is that? Uh, don't say it. Don't say it. Is that? Um, um, What's the guy's name from Young Guns? Emilio Estevan. N- no, but the other guy. Christian Slater. No, the other guy <laughs> that is the singer. Kiefer Sutherland. N- uh, now we're just going in the wrong direction. He's a singer. 
No, Kiefer Sutherland is not. Yes, he is. He is? He has albums out. He owns a record label, or he used to. My friend's band was on it for a while. If you didn't know that much about music, I would say you're making that up. But I'm I, totally I not. believe you. I'm why, totally why not. Why can't I think of this? I have. Is that everybody? Lou Diamond Phillips. That's it. Lou Diamond Phillips. Isn't he Los Lonely Boys? No. Are you sure about that? Yeah. It's three brothers. Lou From Diamond Texas. Phillips and like no. Gary and Diamond Phillips and like <laughs> Frank Diamond Phillips. Yeah, I know. I don't think that's I don't think that's the current roster. Maybe it was before. Uh, <laughs> but these guys are three brothers that play blues and pop, and they had a they had a big hit. Like they're kind of like a one hit wonder in the late two thousands, I would say. Okay. Um, and then Charlie Watts. He yeah. has a jazz mm-hmm. uh, like quartet on the side of being the drummer for the Rolling Stones. Mm-hmm. Right. That's legit. That is legit. I saw something yesterday, or maybe Sunday, how jazz is the least popular musical genre now in the United States. Well, we're getting dumber. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'd... For sure. Yeah. But the thing is about that is like, that's one of the American, that's like one of the only things that America gave musically mm-hmm. was that was jazz, you know? Like that's, <sighs> I... yeah. ever since about 19, it sounds like 1965, 1966, it's just gone downhill. I was really late to come to jazz, like for sure. I it took me a long time to figure out that what they were playing was on on purpose. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of that post like postmodern stuff is just oh, a lot of tweeting and honking to me. It sounds very accidental, or but, just but it's totally not. But it's which not. is crazy, right? All right, so I just opened the eighteen eighty seven uh, the IPA, so which has a lighter IPA appearance. Maybe this is more maybe of a multi like a West Coast IPA. Mm-hmm. Maybe? Yeah, it's definitely got some malt to it. I'm learning. So um, it's called 1887 because that's when it was first tapped. First tapped? I just tapped. looked that up. Yeah, no. I just, I just what? looked it up. Yeah. What? What was first tapped? First tapped in 1887. The the style of beer. Oh. This beer right here. Yep. Okay, I have a story for that, if that's true. I, I have a tie-in maybe. Okay. Well, I'll wrap up the other one first. Okay. Hmm. Oh. I mean, that's not even, to me, that's like a pale ale. Yeah, it's definitely a, a pale. Which, okay, that might tie into this. So last okay. thing I'm, I'm going to say about the Blue City Cafe, their logo is put some south in your mouth. Yep. Boom. Awesome. Uh, yes. Here's the tie-in. Okay. 1877. Is that what that says? 1887. 1887. Okay, so 1877, the Memphis Brewing Company was founded. And it was known as the Tennessee Brewery back then. Okay. They had a roster of about five beers. Um, It was a Pilsner, because back then they didn't name beers like they do now. Mm -hmm. Pilsner. There's one called Export. They had a beer called a Budweiser. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Like That seems like a little bit of copyright infringement. All right. They had a Budweiser. They had a Tennessee Pale Ale. Okay. And a Bavarian. And that was the beers that they made at this brewery. Hmm. They had 1,500 workers working there by 1903, which seems like a lot That's of people. That's a lot of right? people. It was the biggest brewery in the whole South. Wow. Southern United States, this was the biggest one. And by then, they were making 250,000 barrels a year. Wow. They were bottles only until 1947, and then from 47 to 54, they did canning. And then they went belly up, 1954, closed. Hmm. Um, most recently, it had sat empty um, for like, 50 or 60 years and people went into it and broke in and vandalized it and painted on it and had parties and mm-hmm. you know how they you know how they do Those kids do that don't kids we? nowadays um then it got sold the building got sold once in i think the early 2000s for about three hundred thousand dollars and then it got purchased maybe 10 years later um for eight hundred and twenty five thousand dollars and right now, it's one of the hottest spots in Memphis to live because they've turned that brewery into apartments. Oh. And it's called The Brewery. That's the name of the apartment complex, and it's thebrewery.com. Okay. Um, I went online because I was like, who would not want to live in an old brewery? That'd be sweet. Right. They didn't have any pricing, so I can't tell you like mm. what the costs are. It's one of those you got to call and ask so you know it's ritzy. Mm. Um, but there was a bunch of different styles and layouts. It has a really great view of the river that's right there. I don't know if that's the... Would it be, I can't remember what the river's name would be that's right there. I don't think it's. Well, there's, now in my research, I found there's the Ghost River, which is yeah. obviously named after the brewery. And then there was another river, and I did not write it down um, that 
one of them is literally next to this because you had to get water and, and ship your beer and mm-hmm. stuff, right? So a lot of breweries back then were built right on the river. It's like the Wolf something. Could river. be. You got that over there, Dolan? You, you mm-hmm. some Live checking us here? Yeah, oh, he's, he's tweeting. He's on Instagram. He's just looking on. No, no. Oh, he's trying. He's, oh, okay. Yeah. There it is. There he's go. got the beer info. That's it. That's There we go. So the brewery was there, then it's apartments, and you can live there. Um, one of the things you cannot have in these apartments, mm-hmm. tarantulas. No tarantulas allowed. It's right on the website. Hmm. There's a list of animals you can and cannot have. Wow. That one meets the you cannot have it. Also so, cannot have a ferret or a weasel. So at some point, a tarantula got loose and they had I'm, to or the Or the, to... uh, like the, the booking agent or whatever like yeah. is scared of tarantulas maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But it was enough that it made the website. Mm-hmm. Somebody's weasel got loose and uh-huh. ate somebody's tarantula. Yep. Caused a big stir. And then it peed, and then the St. Bernard came after it because that was a dog that you couldn't have. Either. Yeah. Any big dogs were not allowed to be in the brewery. Wow. Yeah. So you can only have, like, like small dogs. Little lap dogs and hmm. ankle biters, they call them. That's Dolan's dogs. Yep. Um, but they yep. the place itself is cool. I mean, it still looks like a brewery on the outside, and they built it inside. It's, like, almost like a European-style courtyard. Mm-hmm. So it's in the middle. Have you ever been to the, the Lincoln State Capitol for Nebraska? Yeah, yeah. And they have that rotunda that's in there that is yes. all decorated out. It yeah. looks very similar to that. Huh. Um, there's balconies that face inside mm-hmm. into the courtyard. And then outside of the apartments, there's ones that have views to the city. Uh, and then there was one specific that had really great views to that river I was talking about. So you, you just have an ass load of money mm-hmm. and you just want to party all the time. Yeah. This is where you live you in could. Memphis. And I don't even know like how expensive it is versus other stuff. I mean, they're new, so they're going to be expensive. Had uh, great amenities. It had like all the modern stuff you want to have in an apartment, mm-hmm. especially in a big city. Like laundry, you know, that's important. Sure. That sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe maybe they do like month to month leasing for travelers. I don't know. No, maybe we'll check that out. So, all right. So I'll do a little bit of. Uh, let me tell you what this 1887 is. Maybe one of the smoothest, yeah, uh, hoppy beers, like, pails I've ever yeah. had. Like it's it's really it has just a nice smoothness. There's a hoppiness to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does it give the IBUs? It does. Uh, let's see. Um, what do you got for us, Dolan? 87 IBUs. 87 IBUs. That's, that's a lot. A lot. I don't that's, taste that at all. I, I don't well, get it. I you, mean, that's 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 probably the most IBUs we've had in a beer on this whole podcast. I will be honest with you. Uh, really? Yeah. It does not taste like that. Yeah. What's the ABV on this? What's the alcohol by volume? You see that on there? Bring it up, Professor. What you got? Yeah. No, he doesn't. He's like, well, I was I was prepared for one question, not yep. two. <laughs> well, he can only do one. That's right. Just, Just scroll down a little. It's got to be there. I'm pretty sure. So let's see. Let's look up. Let's look on Untapped. Let's 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 take a look. Here we go. 1887 IPA. Actually, lists as an IPA on Untapped. Hmm. Uh, Six point two. Okay. So barely. I mean IPA. that IBU, if that's correct, which I'm sure it is because it came from their website. That that definitely puts it in the IPA category, not a pale ale. Mm-hmm. So what would you rate this at on your Untapped? What would you give this us? one? Yep. I don't know. I think I like the malty character of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I can taste some of that IBU, and I, I don't know if that's old Brian from three or four years ago would really like this. Hmm. You know, I would yep. say I would probably go. Um, Three seven five, interesting for this one. Interesting. What do you think I rated it at? Because I just did. oh, you did. Yep. Okay. Um, I don't know because you said you don't. You said this is like smoothish, mm-hmm. but you don't usually like hoppy beers. No. Yeah. I go. I'm gonna say you're gonna go four. I went exactly four. Did you really? Yes, I did. Wow. It doesn't happen often where my rating is higher than yeah. yours. Yeah, that's true. There's a nice smoothness to this one though. That if you if you're one of those like. I don't really like a hoppy IPA, but I like a little. F- I like more flavor than not mm-hmm. in my beer. Then this is right up your yeah. alley. It's bitter, but it's not to the point where it's like overpowering. Right. I would say so. You know, you're drinking a an IPA. Yes, but it's not so much that you're making faces and that sort of thing. Right. There's good good flavor. This to would it. go actually really good with some barbecue too, because mm-hmm. you would get that flavor and it would cut through some of that. That spice. I, I would drink this with Kansas City style barbecue. So the with some sweeter sauce. Yes. Yeah, I could yep. see that totally. Yep. They probably look at you funny in Memphis if you ask for sauce. Yeah. Can They're I like, have, get out of here? Can I have some Kansas City style, You're please? Like, get to Kansas City. Get out of here. Get to Boulevard. Don't yep. bother us here. 
Oh, speaking of which, I almost brought this in. We'll we'll do this when we ever whenever we do Tank Seven. Uh, there's a place that's making Tank Seven cheese. So they're taking they're Ooh, making really? cheese and they're infusing Tank Seven from Boulevard in there. Beer and cheese, uh, beer cheese sounds good if you me. will. Yes. Hmm. Yep. So okay, so now we're 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 through two of them. Um, I'll give you a little bit of details on on Ghost River yeah. Brewing Company. So Ghost River Brewing Company, Memphis, Tennessee, founded in 2007. Um, they average 12 beers on tap at any given time. Mm, that's pretty good. So pretty decent sized yeah. brewery. And then daily food trucks. That's one of the things that right as you as you log onto the web page for the first time, daily food trucks. Um, uh, this was important to them, and, and I think this we've talked about this before, especially in Nebraska with the uh, Ogallala Aquifer. Mm-hmm. The water comes from. I've talked about this in Alaska before. Like, why is the beer so good in Alaska? It's because of the water. Um, this is front and center that the water comes from the Memphis Sand Aquifer, and huh. every brewery in Memphis uses this water. So That's cool. It's like their secret sauce, so to speak. Oh. I mean, aquifers in general is like super filtrated and like about the purest water you can get. So, and I should have wrote this down. Like it said, like how many feet of sand this water filters through? It's like twelve to twenty-four feet. Like it was a lot. I always wonder, like, how did they discover that that was there? Some the first guy that built a well was like, "Holy crud! This like this water is amazing. This is like the best water of all time, right? Like, how would you how would you know? And like, how do they map out like the Nebraska one, the Ogallala one, right? Right. You can go on online and see like a map of how big it is. Uh-huh. How do they know that? And does it get refilled? Like, I'm not a I'm not a geologist. I don't like, think I, so. I, I, I think once it's gone, it's gone, which is why it's kind of protected. Really? Who can use it? I I, I assume some of it would filtrate down, but maybe. Not enough to like make an endless supply. Well, I think that's why they were worried about that um, oil pipeline coming through mm-hmm, for sure. Because yeah. then if it broke, then it would get into the aquifer yeah. and whatever. And I just that was all politics. I stayed out of that. But yeah, and um, science. I try to stay out of that too. It's over my head. Sometimes. Right. I, I don't understand any of that at all. I just know that the water that comes out of there is delicious. If it affects my beer, I'm going to be upset. Mm, Let's go there. Good call. Yeah. Everybody has to have a take a stand. That's right. right. Guess, so. You got to have your you have your convictions, you know? Yeah. Never mind the people that it displaces. That's right, but if it my beer is going to taste weird, no. No. Not there having go. that. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, Tap Room, is on, it's on Main Street. So it's right. I, I assume Main Street mm. is like Main Street. It's got to be downtown, I would assume. Yeah. Uh, tap room is open Wednesday and Thursday, four to ten thirty. Friday and Saturday, noon to eleven. Sunday, noon to eight. So only four days. Only four days. Yeah. Holy not cow. Uh, not open Mondays and Tuesdays. That surprises me. Or if I guess it'd be five, but hmm. that surprises me in a in a town the size of Memphis that you can get away with having two whole days closed. Yeah. Maybe that's just brewing days. I don't. Maybe or I don't know. Maybe the people that own it like want to have a family and some time and. Have it be, you know, like an actual... That's the thing about brewing, right? You know this to be true with those Bobby Cross and, and, and Scott. Like, they're working a ton of hours. Tons of hours. Tons of hours. That was, so if you can be closed for two days yeah. and your business is still open, mm-hmm. you might as well do it, I suppose. But here's the thing, and I would... There's a reason why Sheila brought us this beer and, and mm-hmm. you know, or whatever. It's when, when you go someplace and you're like, this is the best I had, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Like... You're kind of afforded that luxury, maybe. Yeah. That same with cross train, like it's it's a it's a thing. You're just you're afforded that luxury. Yeah. When you make something that, when someone who isn't from your area leaves and says, Damn, "Yeah, try this," wow, yeah, for sure, that's legit. That's why I really like. I mean, I remember that golden one, that golden lager or whatever we had. Like, I was there five years ago, and I remember drinking that beer. I know. A couple of weeks ago, we were gushing about the. Uh, which beer was it that we had just a couple of weeks ago? The New Glarus. Yes. Yeah. Cherry one. That this this Ghost River Gold mm-hmm. is right up there. Whoa. It is right up there. That's high praise, mm-hmm. as they say. As a gold as, as a golden ale. That's yeah. that's pretty darn good. That's pretty good. All right. So which one do you want? Do you want to do the red next and then leave the uh leave the midnight yeah. magic? Yeah, to... let's try that red. All right, hang on. Let me let me finish off this IPA first. So it's always funny because you can tell Especially Dolan can tell who's been talking in here because like mm-hmm. one of us is done drinking, the other one hasn't even started. That sort of thing. See, we gotta. I gotta get in his car later. So. Oh. Yeah. That's true. We have to go film Taco Tuesday. So. Oh well, you'll be hungry. Luckily, these are low ABVs. They really. And, they are. You know, if there's any um, 
spouses or parents or friends listening, these are pretty small pores, so we don't have to worry about it too much. Yeah, we're not just both hammering like a bottle of these right. and then going back to work. Right, since it's audio only. Right. I wouldn't want to give that. That's why I'm the passenger, I assume. You might be the designated driver today. You're, you're filling them all up. All right. Yeah. So Okay, so Irish style red. Riverbank red. Irish style red. So I we're going to start seeing these. If you're out and about anywhere in the country, you're going to be seeing Irish reds now on tap until St. Patrick's Day. Yep. It's just a thing that you're going to find. So it's really what it is is the malt. It's a colored malt, a red malt. Um, it's gonna. These bills are gonna be malty, but they'll be easy drinking. There won't be a lot of hop. So why is it Irish style then? I don't. That's a good question. I think um, it's a style that's the well the original ish quote unquote recipe has been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what and there is a, there is a style of Irish red beer. Okay. I guess we'll see. This like, hits that standard because there's one like Nebraska Brewing Company has one called Farrell's Irish Red. Yes, that's I, out. I, what is the Farrell's? Then I guess I don't even it's just know. somebody's name. I think it's it not the uh, workout um, place here in town where everybody it, goes to work out. It very well could be that maybe that's their their name. I don't. I know. assume that's what it was. So I, I'm I'm super interested because in March uh, Atlas Eats is going to be uh, corned beef and cabbage, traditional, right? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and you know, you how do you cook that with beer, don't you? Absolutely. I was going to say you have to. Well, yes. Yeah. But do you cook it with an Irish style red? Why not? Or... Yeah. Why okay. not? No, I, I don't you could do that or a, even a Guinness probably. Well, would you, you? Could. would you? I mean, you could. Hmm. I put, I put a breakfast out in my chili this weekend. Okay. Well, I can see that's some so. sweetness or whatever. I put chocolate in my chili. Like chunks of chocolate? Yeah. Yeah. Baker's chocolate, like no. semi sweet, or no, 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 no. Andy's like mints the, from Chi Chi's, just well, dump them in there. No, is there Chi Chi's? Not anymore. Not I wish anymore. there was, man. Yeah. Fried ice cream from Chi Chi's. See, man. that's a you and me joke yes, there. That's is. a memory we're gonna always have. Uh-huh. No one's gonna wish he knew about uh-huh. Chi Chi's. He's never gonna no, no. <laughs> when you go on a when you go on a high school trip and you order the fried ice cream from Chi Chi's, oh, yeah. yep. And then your stomach hurts all the way home on the bus. Yeah, well, you wish you hadn't done that. Feel like you've you might have lived that. That's a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So okay, so I, I haven't even drank this yet. So Irish style red ale, Riverbank Red. Hmm. Malty, mm-hmm. that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Like very malty. Yeah, that's the main. That's the main thing I would get out of that one. But it was a nice smooth maltiness, though. Yeah, and, and like I said, it should not be hoppy. It's not going to be bitter. Um, that's just the that's just the makeup of this beer. IBUs on this, Dolan. You got any uh, research here? Yeah, it's uh, twenty five, and it gives me another spec on here. It's called the OG. I guess that's the, for the, the light to pass through the liquid. I think. What is it? OG uh, rating. Uh, apparently, it's beer gravity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then the number after it is ten fifty four. Mm. I guess that's um, one point zero fifty four. Uh, that's how many sugars is in it what? for the yeast to eat. What? Yeah, so that helps. A little alcohol, bit of little bit of science. That's there a lot of it. It's a lot of beer science, right um, there. I guess it was also originally brewed for the hometown Triple A ball club, the Memphis Redbirds. There we go. <sighs> Stupid Cardinals. Triple A affiliate of the St. Louis yeah. Cardinals. I don't even want your drink. hate for the Cardinals triples down to the I don't to the minors. I don't even want to drink the rest of this if that's the case. I don't even want to drink this. <laughs> You're like I knew it tasted like a loss. Ugh. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, here it won the GABF Silver Medal. That's the Great America Beer Fest. Yeah. yeah. Oh, in in the Irish style red. What year? 2011. Oh, there you look go. At that eight years ago. Yeah. Well, good job. Award winning. This is an award winning beer. It's still stupid Cardinals. I beer. this. What I like about this one, you cannot see through it at all. No, there's no. Yeah, you don't. You don't get much at all. It's, no. it's a. It's a darker. Well, okay, that's that's. Uh, it's a redder. How's that? Yeah, it's not dark. It's no, just, it's. Just, I red. would say very caramely colored. Okay, if the Cardinals weren't so stupid, then I would. I would You'd drink. Desire. <laughs> 4.0 if see, it wasn't the cardinal I beer. Can't, I can't let it go. Um, I would drink this with like corned beef and cabbage. Like this would be a very good corned beef yeah. and cabbage. Yeah. I think you should cook with this one. 
I feel like this is a this is a good cooker. Yeah. I'll choose a non Cardinals beer oh, for my that. Goodness. How's that? You're there such any, a Cubs fan. Are there any Chicago beers? There's got to be a Chicago uh, that we can get around like here. Irish. Red. I don't know. You the, might have to make a trip. I bet you there's a ton of of Irish Chicagoans out there that make some really good beers. There should be. That's Call kind of a big thing, a, right? In Chicago. Yeah, Revolution. I bet they make a really good one. We'll we'll check it out. Okay. So, no offense to Ghost River on in your affiliation with the. Cardinals. It's not your fault that the minor league team is in town. <laughs> I guess not. Maybe someday you'll get a better oh my AAA goodness. affiliate down God, there. Such a Cubs guy. Gosh. Darn it. Through I, can't, through. I can't wait for baseball to start. And you can't even help it, right? Mm. Like people are always like, oh, because I'm a, I'm a Royals fan. Sure. And we had, oh, 28 years between World Series and the playoffs. Yes. And people were always like, why don't you just pick a different team? No. It doesn't work that it way. It does not work kidding? that way. No. 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 So like I just, you know. Took it on the chin for 28 years. Yes. Probably that, hooped and hollered a lot when we won the World Series. That's the pain of of, of just baseball in general. Like that, mm-hmm. and maybe that's what I don't. So I named my son after a, a great Chicago Cub, yeah. Greg Maddox, right? And Maddox, so Maddox, when we won, when we, because I was part of the team in 2016, we all were. <laughs> mm-hmm. We all were. You were part of the Royals team in 2015. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah, say Yeah, I words. agree. So when we won the World Series in 2016, it was a, it was a great time. Maddox was only let's see, he was six. No, he was seven at the time, and he, it, that's unfair. That's not fair. He well, doesn't would you want him to be like 37. Well, no, he doesn't know the pain of, of 90 years or whatever. Uh, yeah. yeah, I know. Think I, of it. I mean, think he should be. He's blessed to have it this young. So somehow he became a Minnesota Vikings fan. So what? there's I don't even understand. I made a bitter beer face at oh, that one. What? I don't Ow. I don't get it. Paul Elam might have had some influence oh, on that. My I have goodness. no idea. Maybe some Madden football on his Xbox might have Could had be, some. Yeah. So that's there's some pain there. Yeah. So maybe that's maybe that's the maybe that's the pain. Getting back at you. Yeah. yeah. Oh. All right. So we'll we'll drink some red with uh with the corned beef and cabbage. Okay. Soup. Not this one, but uh not that this one isn't good. This one's it's a pretty solid style. I mean it has to be if it won. Mm-hmm. Just saying. How are they not putting that on the label still? Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's not on. It's not on. There. Okay. I was going to be, is this another catnip? <laughs> but it does say, this one's for the wolf. Ghost River donates $1 from every barrel sold to the Wolf River. So it's got to be the Wolf River that they can see from that apartment That's what complex. it is, yes. I, I don't even want to try. So they're trying to keep the river clean and stuff? So yeah. it's like... Uh... <sighs> Like a charity. I don't want to... Uh, yeah, conserva- con- conservation. Conservation. Well, it's C-O-N-S-E-R-V-A-N-C-Y. Con- Conservancy. Conservancy? Yeah. Is that it? I don't want to sound dumb. Well, that's probably too late for yeah, us. Yeah, too late for that. You know what? The Cardinals still suck. Oh, that's, How's that? Oh, how's gosh. that? That's a C word you can say. Yes. Yes, Cardinals. Conservancy. Yeah. So they, they donate one one dollar. So not only is it for charity, mm-hmm. and they won the silver medal mm-hmm. as the best red, the second best red. But in they're the whole affiliated country. with the Cardinals. But that AAA goes ball. down the toilet because they're a AAA for the Cardinals. Hey, nobody's perfect. I, I guess every bit of the like good juju that we mm-hmm. built up with Ghost River Brewing was all yeah. just flushed right there oh, because I goodness. made fun of the Cardinals. Well, luckily we've got one more to pull it back up here for us. I'm cons- I. I'm really curious about this German style. So let me let me finish off the... Look at this. I'm, I've been talking That's too much. That's because you're... Yeah, you went on a Cardinals oh, tangent. Man, too much. All right, let me finish off the red, and then we'll get into the... You want to open up the... Uh, you want to yeah, open up the yeah. black? There you go. Open up the black. And, and So do you have any information on this style? Because I don't believe we've ever had this style before. I didn't even know we were doing this style until we sat down, so I don't. But I would guarantee you it's all about... Um, it's gonna be about the uh, I'm not, malt is not the word I'm looking for. Here, let me let me fill this up for you. That's dark. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Hmm. That's a style that. So it's gonna be a roasted um, flavor. It's okay. It's gonna be like roasted and toasty. I guess is the best hmm. way to say it. Interesting. That's what gives it that color. Let's see what it says on the back here. Yeah. Well, this is another one that goes, a dollar goes to the river fund. Hmm. So they must really be tied into that. That's well, pretty cool. Yeah, some breweries like dogs. Some breweries. I like wonder if, dogs. so 
there's a lantern that's like on every bottle, right? Yep. I feel like that's got to be tied into the river somehow, like river Ooh. boats or maybe. Um, I, I get the feeling of like a Tom Sawyer Huckleberry Finn sort yes. of thing, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's pretty cool. I like that. Do you notice on, right below that it says made, to, made wander. to wander? Yeah. So when you log into their website for the first time, it says wander responsibly, and you have to confirm that you're over the age of 21, right. which the normal breweries websites yeah. would do or whatever. But this wandering thing is, is kind of part of their uh, message. So throughout. one of the cool things about that is it, it could mean the beer itself, right? Like sure. Like this got here. It wandered here it wandered to Omaha, here. you know? Mm-hmm. Thanks to our friend Sheila. That's, yeah. Mm, it smells good. Hmm. That's a. It's almost a stout smell, almost. I mean, it's going to be the same sort. The only thing really different is going to. Well, I bet you. What's the hops on this one? Mm. Dolan, do you have that? IBUs? You got that? Yeah, it's uh, 30. 30. And the OG is 1058, so a little okay. bit more sugar. Mm. So it's a little bit stronger. Right, my and alcohol. In, my initial right reaction is this tastes like barbecue. There is a smoky. It's got that smokiness to it. Yes. Yep. There's a smoky kind of. Uh, I don't want to say salty because that's not. Yeah. It's hard to explain. It's not off putting. No. Right? No. 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 It's just there, mm-hmm. but it's not like an ashtray sort of situation. Mm-hmm. It just no. has that roastedy feel. It's it's when you get good barbecue and it has that kind of smoke the smoke ring flavor. Smoke yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's how you know it's good or absolutely that's what they say. The thickness of the smoke ring mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, that's that, the, the that layer of pink that's uh-huh. around there. Yeah. Yes. This would be amazing with barbecue. Mm, like a brisket. And you've got to think like these guys are brewing beer on purpose for that reason, right? Well yeah. Because if you're in a town that's known for that mm-hmm. You've got to be able to to match it because these are in sold in restaurants. That's where I had it. I didn't go to this brewery. Mm-hmm. I had it in rib restaurants. I could. This is like a brisket beer right here. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's brisket sandwich with this. That'd be pretty good. That would be really good. Maybe I'm just mm-hmm. hungry, but that's. Uh, it also could be could be it too. Mm-hmm. Or with tacos, one of the two. This makes me want to do a black IPA on a on an upcoming episode. I'd like to do a black IPA because I really I don't know what that is at all. They're super hard to like get. Nobody makes them. I hmm. think I think I have a lead on maybe one we can hmm. maybe we can pry one from Aaron Daly because he has uh, at, at least did a connection to probably the best one I've had. Oh, and it's from his hometown in Hendricks, Minnesota. No kidding. Yeah, hmm. population of like two hundred or something. And there's a brewery there. Bank Brewing Company. It's in the old town bank. Old the old bank with and the vault and they brew yeah, and they brew their beers in there and then they got I can't remember what the other building was, but like down the street a little bit there was another business that went up yeah. and they bought that and that's their, their tap room, tasting room, mm-hmm. just down the street. So like the whole town is this brewery and they make one called Into the Black and it is amazing. Really? For black IPA. Okay. Well maybe so someday we'll I'll see if I can sweet talk him. Interesting. I mean, if he gave us, he's given he's 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 given us a lot of beer already. He has definitely shared with us for sure. Yeah. So yeah, I can't even. I'm probably in. I, I probably owe him hundreds of dollars now <laughs> at this point for the. You know what? He just wants you to enjoy it and like it. That's what his thing is. He loves turning people on to those kinds of beers. I like that about him. That's a, I like that a lot. So, at never having a German style black ale. This is an interesting. This is yeah. interesting. This could have been one by all by itself. For sure. It's It's got some depth, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, it, well, you definitely can mm-hmm. see through it. All right, so it's I almost wanna... a chocolatey look to it, but not a chocolatey taste. No, look. Yeah. Right. Like there's, there's, a, there's a like almost darker than Pepsi darkness to this. Yeah. Hmm. It's, it's almost as dark as the stout episode we did previously. In color. Ooh, oh, in color, definitely. Yeah, but not thickness not or anything like that. thickness or head or... And if you let the light go through just a little bit, you kind of get a little bit of that brown at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Okay, that's so if I, had, if I had to uh, Alabama Boss these, oh, right? okay. if I had to rank these in order, right? If you're yeah. not familiar with Alabama Boss, go look this dude up. He's hilarious. Yeah. Big old beard from Alabama. Drinks beers, and he is definitely like a bush light, bud light kind of guy. Mm-hmm. And he drinks a bunch of different beers, and it's hilarious. Um, okay, so if I had to rank these in order, I would do the gold first. Yeah. And then the black ale. So oh, this one right okay. here. Yep. 
then the IPA, and then the red. So this has been a, a win for you this episode. Yeah. These have been really good for your palate. Absolutely. I would say. A, a, a change, yeah. I almost wonder if this is, it would be considered a Schwartz beer, which is like a smoked malt beer. That's almost what this reminds me of, this black one. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to do a little more research on that. Hmm. I I have generally shied away from these smoked beers. Mm -hmm. Like that's happened before and I've shied away from those. Usually it's the ingredients themselves, like the peated, like that sort of stuff is where the smoke comes. Like a scotch ale is is usually some sort of smoke. Um, But uh, some of them actually are smoked. Yeah, I I don't know. One of the very first smoked beers I ever had, um, it's a Roquefort it's called. Okay. I don't know if it's Belgian, but it's from Europe somewhere. Okay. And they have a beer that's... They have three beers total that they make, and it's like a six, eight, and ten. Those are the beers. Okay. And one of them is a smoked beer, and it's like the world's best smoked beer. And I took a drink of it, and I was like, oh, my gosh. This is like campfire in my mouth smoke. Uh, like I was a dragon uh, when I was wow. done with that. And maybe if you're you know, into that, then it, it's great. But if you're not, maybe if you weren't in a bowling alley in the 80s, right. you don't want this beer. Right. There was a, there was a time where... Um, Maybe maybe one of us had a uh, Halloween party, and there was uh, one of our recruiters here uh, accidentally drank out of the uh, oh. the 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 bottle where the they were putting bottle? their yeah it was gross Ooh. it still makes me want to barf thinking about that's it that's not good that would be what I would think mm-hmm. about if, yeah that's yeah. kind of about what it was that's gross I don't know until I tried it that's uh, that wouldn't be no no here's what's not gross these beers mm-hmm. oh man super good. Ghost River Brewing, um, with any luck, I'm talking my wife into going to Memphis this year. You've got to do it. I want to. You will love it. Yep. You will love it. <sighs> a couple weeks in a row here. I'm going to have her listening to listen to this yeah. one. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's got the history. It's got music. It's got food. It's got beer. What more can you want for a little vacation spot? And it has baseball. Not great baseball, but it has baseball. Uh, well, you, maybe so. the Iowa Cubs are there sometime. Oh, maybe I could check and see when the Cubs mm-hmm. are there. So there you cool. go. That would be a weird coincidence if we showed up the same time as the Iowa Cubs. We'd be like, look, Jenny. What yeah, happened? I'm sure she would totally buy it, too. Yeah, she would totally, she'd be like, what a weird coincidence huh, this is. Weird. That is so awesome. You can go to that baseball game. Yep. Well, if, she's, if you're staying at the Peabody. You, right across the street. Yeah. Right, across, right the street. across the street. She can watch the Ducks. I can watch baseball. Yep. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Ghost River. That uh, And thank you, Sheila Bissell. Thanks, Thanks Sheila. Uh, Hope you're enjoying your time in Memphis. Absolutely. So, from what I've heard, um, she definitely is enjoying her time there. So, good. Yeah. Good. Good contract. She's having a lot of fun down there, especially Beale Street and, and the uh, barbecue and, and the beers down there. So, all right, Ghost River. I hope to see you soon. We'll see you next week.